How are you doing? Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you had a nice uh, Easter weekend. Uh, we had a lot of boxing over this Easter weekend and one fight that may have slid under your radar um, was the WBA um, welterweight championship fight between the holder who was um, Radzaev, Radzaev Butaev of Russia and the challenger um, Emantus Stanionis. Now, you're thinking, hang on a minute, didn't Errol Spence fight Ugas for the WBA title? Ah, oh, well, you'd be wrong because Errol Spence is the super champion, WBA this is, and um, Mr. Butaev was only the, the regular champion. So it all makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, anyway, regardless of the belt, belt's irrelevant to me anyway. Uh, Radza Butaev of Russia, a uh, tough Russian guy, I think he's about 28, uh, came in with a 14 wins and no defeats um, record, had won the title from Jamel James, um, stopped him in nine rounds. Uh, James had had his moments in that fight, he was landing punches, um, and you might think, well, Butaev may not be the, if you'd seen that fight, he may not be the most defensive-minded fighter. Yeah, okay, we go with that. But um, very tough guy with a very good chin. Uh, and this was his first defence, I think. I hadn't seen a lot of Butaev, and nor, nor Stanionis, to be honest with you. But Butaev, I think I'd seen the James fight. And I can't remember ever seeing him before. I might have done, but I can't remember. Anyway, the point was that he was coming into this fight as a slight favourite against the 13-0 um, Imanta Stanionis. Stanionis was from, is from Lithuania. I was struggling to think of Lithuanian world champions. I know Jack Sharkey, the old heavyweight champion, was uh, son of Lithuanian uh, parents, immigrants. Um, and I think his real name was uh, Zakauskas or something like that. It begins with a Z anyway. I can't remember the first name. And currently, if you fast forward, you know, 90 years or whatever it is, um, modern day Lithuanian fighters... Edgus Kavalauskis is Lithuanian. I can't think of too many others, though. I honestly can't. I'll have to have a sit down and think about it. But anyway, Stanley Onis, I'd seen him before um, fighting um, Thomas Delorme. He won a unanimous decision over Delorme in 2021. Delorme has since been ironed out in a round by Jamel Boots. You know, Ennis Boots, we know, is a big, big prospect, a uh, pretty deadly hitter. And I think Stanionis had a technical draw. There was a clash of heads against an ancient Luis Calazo. But so both these guys hadn't really... All right, maybe they maybe they fought good men. Because I can't say I've heard of a lot of their opponents. And in the case of Butayev, a lot of them were, I think, in Russia, uh, in Stanionis. Uh, but Stanionis uh, has fought in America quite extensively, but I hadn't heard of many of his opponents. But this was a very, very good matchup. And stylistically, they were very, very similar. I would say... Um, well, they're both listed as being orthodox fighters. Throughout the fight, Butayev would switch hit an awful lot. But when he's, when he's in the orthodox stance, they both look to me very, very similar in style and in stature. Um, Stanion is probably a little bit more static. Butayev slightly more movement from the waist. But the first round, I mean, I thought Stanion is at the time, watching it live, I thought, or watching it, I didn't watch it live, actually. I watched it recorded. On, I think it was on YouTube. But um, as I watched it for the first time, I thought Stanionis probably did a little bit a little bit more sharper punching in the first round. There wasn't a great deal in it. You give it to either man. I think I gave it to Stanionis. Second round, more of the same. But I have a little bit busier. It looked to me like, like I say, the sharper punching was from St uh, Stanionis. Very, very good jab from Stanionis. Really good jab. But Butayev had the more thudding, clumping power. And I think neither guy took a backward step. I mean, they, they were they were standing, you know, right in front of each other. And occasionally someone would take a backward step to reset. But there was no neither man was pushing the other back. And in the third round, Butayev really started to go to work, especially to the body. And he was doing some very, very good work to the body. And I thought, oh, you know, this looks a bit ominous for... Um, Stanionis. Fourth round was more of the same. 
uh, and like I said earlier, you know, Butayev was switch hitting an awful lot, which was. I sometimes think when fighters switch hit, presumably they do it to try and confuse the opponent, but it looks to me sometimes like they're confusing themselves more than the opponent. And I didn't really see the logic behind Butayev switch hitting all the time. But he was having success in the third and fourth rounds to the body. Fifth round, I don't know much about the fifth round. It was pretty even if memory serves. But then, I don't know, for, for some reason, the body work from Butayev didn't become so pronounced. Maybe he thought, I'll soften him up for a few rounds and then go for the head. But he hadn't softened him up enough. That's not to say Stanionis wasn't feeling Butayev's power. He was. But Butayev, I think, um, probably let something slip a little bit. If he concentrated more on the body instead of trying to get in close, and it's not like he was totally neglecting the body. But he allowed Stanionis to start working, to really go to work. And Stanionis suddenly was firing a lot more punches. And as I say, he, his jab was really, really good. But he was also mixing his punches up and doing his own body work as well. And landing to the head. And suddenly the tide sort of gradually turned over the middle rounds. Um, the one thing that was a bit naughty from Bataev was he was leaning, up close he was leaning on Stanionis and pushing him down. And the referee did warn him. And then I think it was at the end of the, I think at the end of the eighth round, Butayev was in his corner and the ref came over and said, no more pushing him down, otherwise I'll take a point off you. Meanwhile, in the other corner, Stanionis was looking quite bedraggled, not panicked. He had blood from his nose. Um, I don't think there were any cuts in this fight over the eyes. If there were, they were just abrasions, minor, minor cuts. But there was some blood from Stanionis's nose, I think it was, and he, he may have had a busted lip as well. And there's no doubt that Butayev had the heavier hands. That clumping power was sort of wearying Stanionis. Stanionis um, was landing good punches himself and clean punches. So you can make an argument for him winning the rounds, but it, it, was, pay, it, was, it was being forced to work harder than, than Butayev. And the question was, he's winning a lot of these rounds, but can he maintain it? Or is Butayev going to come on strong down the championship rounds? Now... In the championship rounds, Butayev did try and put the heat on him, but Stanionis kind of stood up to it. And then a big thing happened in the 11th round where there was one too, one too many pushdowns on Stanionis and the referee did take a point off Butayev for pushing down on the opponent. Um, I think the scenario was that Stanionis was being pushed down and Butayev holding him down was whacking him to the body with the right hand. So the ref said, no, 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 point off. And he was warned, Butayev. Um... Then in the final round, there was a big, big exchange. Um, Stanionis really let his hands go. Didn't seem to bother Butayev much. Again, Butayev's power seemed to bother Stanionis a bit more. But the work rate of Stanionis from about the fifth round until the final round was, was sharper and probably a bit more, generally speaking, than Butayev. And as a result, I think I had the fight 115-112 to Stanionis. Now, this wasn't a slugfest. It was a gruelling, tough fight, but there was too much quality work going on for it to be a pure slugfest. But it was a very absorbing, like I say, a gruelling uh, fight to watch. Um, and the winner was um, Ementus Stanionis, the new WBA regular World Awake champion, or whatever the hell you want to call it. He won a split decision. I had it one. I had it for him one fifteen, one twelve. But it was the type of fight where if you watched it again, you you might make it a draw. You might even have a, have it a point or two the other way, or you might have it wider for the guy you originally picked. It was one of those fights where so many of the rounds were very, very close and sort of difficult to choose. So I think the logical thing to do is to have a rematch. It's a dead cert for a rematch. It's, this was a really good fight. Looking at, I was watching it on on YouTube, and there didn't seem to be many people in the crowd. This was a bloody good fight. And it was sort of buried under, I don't know what, what it was on. Was it on the, I don't think it was on the Spence Ugas card, or was it? Well, wherever it was, there were more enough people watching this fight. It was a good, gruelling, tough 12-rounder between two very, very good, world-class fighters. Um, answering questions, they're both undefeated. Um, Stanley Onis goes to 40-0. Bataev drops, he's got now got one loss on his record. But let's have a rematch. This was a good, good fight. Let's have a rematch. So did you see it? If not, go over to YouTube and have a look. Um, Emanta Stanionis and Radzaya Butayev. Have a look at it. Tell me what you think.
leave your comments below and as always thank you for your time for watching this video and uh, we will speak again soon so yep bank holiday monday tomorrow in the uk so enjoy yourselves we'll speak again soon bye for now